London's high streets could be given new life under plans being introduced in next month's Queen's speech. The government wants to give councils the power to force landlords to rent out vacant spaces once they've been empty for six months. Well, the number of empty shops has soared since the start of the pandemic. The proposal has been welcomed by many organisations, but there are also calls for ministers to do more to save the high street. Well, let's get reaction from John Hoyle, who runs Souk, a company which turns vacant shops into into bookable spaces. Here's what he had to say when I spoke to him a little earlier. Well, there's there's two things that need to change. Firstly, landlords need to completely uh, adopt a, a different business model that actually embraces customers who want agile access to physical space rather than chasing 10-year leases and high covenant strengths. But it's not all landlords' faults. Um, local authorities need to, um, with central government, work to address business rates, which even if landlords are giving some shops away for free, are so punitive that it makes it really impossible to compete with online brands. We saw uh, earlier this year the government um, issuing uh, the, the beginning stages of the levelling up plan. Uh, apart from the two points that you mentioned there, what is it that you support when it comes to uh, their decisions for the um, high streets? And, and where do you think it's lacking? Well, uh, the, I mean, the levelling up plan is is quite unclear. Um, I'm actually really concerned about the recent announcements to give um, local authorities the right to effectively sort of take possession or at least dictate use of shops that have been empty for more than six months. We're still waiting on a lot more detail about that. But, you know, the, the unintended consequences of that are, are actually really worrying because... I mean, imagine if you bought a house and someone said to you, well, that is your house, but you've got to use it to be a creche for three days a week. It would devalue your property. And that's effectively the risk of what this, um, this approach might do for shops at a time when really the asset managers who own um, shops need as much help as they can possibly get. So I think it, it is slightly concerning. I think it also is a lovely headline grabber, but it... it sends um, all the attention away from much easier thing for local authorities to do, which is stop charging ridiculous business rates that are, as I mentioned earlier, really make shops unviable for a lot of people because they're from a different era when shops were distribution channels for stuff and the primary point from where we got everything. But now, um, you know, we all know everything can be delivered from home. We need to think about different ways to tax fairly across the entire ecosystem of retail. Let's just focus there on actual um, shops. Uh, we've, we've seen the way that people interact with high streets really change over the last couple of years. Um, do you think that there is still space or there is still growth for people to go back to actual bricks and mortar shops or is that now becoming a thing of the past? Is everything slowly, slowly going to shift to be online? We, we shop so much uh, online already. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, retail uh, online is growing, and, and that's, that's great. There's more retail in the world than there ever has been before. But, I mean, what you'll have been seeing um, in news recently is it's incredibly expensive to get noticed online. In some ways, the world's gone full circle from when, you know, the first online retailers came out, and suddenly it was like, this is amazing. We don't have to pay for a, sh a shop or stock, and we can get noticed. But now, it's so expensive to get pay for Facebook ads or Google um, that actually having a physical presence is really beneficial. So what um, we think is going to change is that um, there will be a place for physical space. It's just going to be completely different and much more agile. Brands expect to get the same experience they get online in physical space. And that involves reaching customers on an an analytically driven basis and on top terms that work for them. You know, if you've experienced being an online retailer, why would you then take a shop for a decade and sit there for seven days a week, pay hundreds of thousands of pounds to fit it out, staff it for seven days, and then only make enough, you know, have to pray that your Saturday drives enough income to make all of that financially sustainable. Yeah. I think physical retail will be, exist forever, but in just completely different ways, much more amenity driven, much more about reaching the right customers at the right time. Because if you think about fashion retail, What's the point in having a fashion retail shop that's the same thing seven days a week? We all know that a Monday and a Saturday, completely different places wherever you are in the world, 
why not have shops doing the right thing at the right time? Be a fashion retailer at the weekend, but be something amenity, um, wellness, um, or even work-based at the other hours of the week when people actually need it for that use. Yeah, an agile and sort of very adaptive workspace. Let's um, just talk about your business, uh, John, that you run, you look, which looks to address um, some of these issues. Uh, can you tell us about the business and, and how you hope that it's going to sort of uh, bring high streets back to life, perhaps in a different way? Yeah, so uh, we, are, we rent shops by the hour. We do that by putting a digital device inside them, which using Canva, which is a kind of big Photoshop type uniform from, unicorn from Australia. You can put whatever digital content you want on the walls with the touch of a button, and then you can rent that space for whatever you want for a, a minimum of an hour. And what's cool about that is that you can um, save a fortune by not having to spend money on a fit out, by not having to have rent, business rates or rent that um, stretch across the entire year. Um, and you can bounce around our platform in an agile way. So we have seven sites at the moment. Um, three are on Oxford Street, one in Hammersmith from a London perspective. But we're opening in Dubai and Abu Dhabi this year in Canada. Um, and we're trying to create a global network where you could be a small business anywhere in the world and you can reach customers wherever our business, which is called Souk, exists. And that takes the headache of real estate out of the equation for all sorts of brands that want to do completely different things. And it's a much wider spectrum than just shopping. It can be a, um, a Pilates studio in the morning. It can be a bank at lunchtime. It can be an event space in the evening. When you think that most shops don't open till 10 a.m. and they close at 6, it's a much better use of all of these empty, empty assets that we have. Um, across our towns and cities. And, and what's even better about it from a landlord perspective is that because we charge a premium for that agility, these, these units generate more money than a shop does during a traditional lease. So we think it's a really compelling model for the future. And our dream is to allow all sorts of brands to compete nationally and even internationally um, in a way that's never been possible before. Well, that was John Hoyle there with his reaction to government plans for reviving the high street and uh, his business hoping to do the same.